Hi, I'm Lisa from Lori's Country Cottage. Welcome to How Tuesday. Today we're going to learn how to choose the right needle for your project. Alright, let's learn about needles. First, here's the picture of a needle. Here are the parts. At the top is the shank. The shank of the needle for almost all machines has a flat back and the flat back goes to the back of your machine when you're inserting the needle. So that's the shank. Then Schmetz has teeny tiny writing on their needles that nobody could read and because of that they finally came up with a color coded system on their needles that tells you the type and the size of the needle and we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Next up is the shoulder. That's where the shank tapers down to the blade. The blade is the long part of the needle. Most needles will have a groove in the front of the blade to um, accommodate the thread. Then we're looking at the eye and the point of the needle, so we'll talk about that when we talk about different needles. And then on the back of the needle, behind the eye, is the scarf. And some needles will have um, special adaptations in their scarf for thicker fabrics. Uh, sorry, thicker thread. So that is the needle, the parts of the needle. Next up, how to read your needle package. So Schmetz needles, and we carry Schmetz needles at Lori's Country Cottage. Um, they are the industry leader in sewing machine needles. There is one other very popular brand and then kind of an, um, a third, third brand out there, but we carry Schmetz um, number one in the industry. So Schmetz packaging will tell you the needle type and size using the color, um, again, the needle type, so whether you're buying Microtex or embroidery or whatever type of needle you're buying. There's a needle system, so the, the 13705HE means it's a home sewing machine needle. There will be long arm needles and other kinds of needles out there. And then your needle size. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Next up is the color coding for needles. Insert image here. Excellent. So um, when you go to take a needle out of your machine and you don't remember what you had in there and you can't read that microscopic writing on the shaft, you can just look at the colors. The top color tells you what kind of needle it is, whether it's quilting, microtex, etc. And the bottom color tells you your size. And I will um, tell you where to find all these resources at the end of the video. So needles come in many sizes. The sizing for needles um, gives you both US numbers and European numbers. So the European numbers are the 70, 80, 90, 100. The US numbers are 10, 12, 14, 16. So a 70, 10, is a European 70 US 10. And the sizing works, uh, the smaller the number, the smaller the needle, the thinner the needle. So it's pretty easy to figure out. How do you choose your needle type and size? Well, you have to consider the fabric that you're using and also the thread that you'd like to use. So your goal when sewing is to have the needle pass through the fabric, leaving the smallest hole possible and not damaging any fabrics. And at the same time, you need the thread to pass through with the needle without damaging either the fabric or the thread itself. So let's go over the different kinds of needles. First up, universal needles. And they are what they say they are. They are universal. They have a slight ball tip so that you can sew both knits and woven fabrics with them. The slight ball tip 
allows it to pass in between the fibers of your knit fabrics so that you're not cutting any of those fabrics, yet it's sharp enough, pointy enough to use for woven fabrics. The only thing it really isn't useful for is fabrics with a really high thread count, um, quite often batiks and um, microfiber and fabric like that. So while I was doing research on needles, I found a great analogy that made so much sense to me. So I'll share it with you. Universal needles are like a new camera. So you are interested in photography and you buy yourself a fancy camera and when you first get it, you set it on A, automatic, and you start taking pictures and it works great. A, automatic, simple. U, universal, simple. Don't have to think too much. But as you get more and more into photography, you want to do other things. You want to take some portraits, you want to take some close-ups, and all of a sudden you need to learn the new settings on your camera. That's how the specialized needles work when you're sewing. So A automatic is fine, it takes great pictures, but once you use the special settings, you see how A automatic doesn't do the whole job. So universal needles are great, but once you start specializing, you might want to look at some of these other needles. So let's move on to the other needles. First up, ballpoint or jersey needles. So they are meant for knit fabrics. Um, if you sew uh, cuddle or minky blankets, that's the kind of needle you're going to want to use. They have a rounded tip, again, so they go in between the fibers of the fabric. They don't break the fibers. If you break a knit fiber, it will pull, it'll run out. And um, so you're using it for stretch fabrics. Then there's a stretch needle. So stretch needles are for highly elasticized fabric like Lycra. So if you're sewing with a knit, you could start with a ball or stretch needle. And if you're having any issues at all, you can move to a stretch needle that also has a rounded tip. Then there are denim and jeans needles. So of course, they're used for denim and jeans, but also um, highly dense fabric, uh, linen, canvas, denim, those kinds of heavier fabrics. It has a reinforced blade for exactly that purpose, going through heavier fabrics. You can also use heavier threads with denim needles, sometimes um, the jean thread when you're hemming pants. Next up are embroidery needles. So embroidery needles are actually made to be used with specialty embroidery threads. So rayons, polyesters, and other specialty threads. The process of embroidery creates heat and friction between the thread and the needle. So the embroidery needles have a larger eye and they have a special scarf on the back of the needle and a specialized groove on the front of the needle to accommodate those specialty threads and minimize friction. Next up, metallic needles. So metallic thread is famous for shredding. It is a thicker thread and the process of going in and out of the needle just tends to shred metallic threads. So they have now a metallic needle. It has a longer eye and it's also coated to allow that thread to slide through and prevent shredding and breaking of your thread. Then there are Microtex Sharps needles. They are specially formulated to be used with tightly woven fabrics like microfiber, silk, and batiks. They have a very uh, slim shaft and a very sharp point so that they can get through those tightly woven fabrics. Now, because of that thin shaft, 
they are prone to breaking. So when you use Microtax needles, you may need to change your needle more often. Then there are quilting needles. Quilting needles are good for most fabrics. Um, they have a strengthened shaft because you're going through layers. So not only are you stitching two pieces of fabric together, but you're stitching through all of those seam allowances when we butt seams and when we layer our fabrics. So it helps to prevent um, needle breaking and skipped stitches. It's got a thin shaft, but a specially tapered point for going through all those layers. Then there are top stitch needles. So top stitch needles, self-explanatory, they're for top stitching. So they, again, have a larger elongated eye to allow your thread to move a little bit in that eye as you're going through all of the layers. Um, so an extra large eye, it's got a large groove to accommodate thicker threads. So sometimes when we're top stitching for our quilts, we like to use 40 weight threads. So a thicker thread, so it's got um, a larger groove and also a nice sharp point. Then Schmetz recently came out with super non-stick needles. So they were made and formulated for use with any kind of adhesive product. So think um, embroidery stabilizers, heat and bond, 505 sprays, steam seam and things like that. And also in the bag making world, they're used when sewing with leather, cork and vinyl because they help, that non-stick coating helps to pass through those stickier um, surfaces. So the super non-stick actually have an anti-adhesive coating and a larger eye. Again, you might be wanting to use heavier thread um, when stitching through adhesive products and a special scarf on the back, again, to help that thread pass through nicer. So super non-stick needles are basically formulated so that you don't have sticky residue all over your needle and you won't have any skipped stitches. And then Schmetz also has come out with chrome needles. Now chrome needles, you can get a universal chrome, a metallic chrome, an embroidery chrome. So it's, a, it's an addition to the regular kind of needles. And they are specially coated to resist wear and heat. So less friction means that your thread passes through the, the needle nicer. Um, they're advertised as, think, extra strength. So again, if you're using a specialty fabric, a specialty thread, if you're having an issue sewing something, why not throw in one of the chrome needles and see if that fixes your problems. So what does that mean for quilters? Those are a lot of needles. What do we need to use? We want to use the smallest size needle possible that it passes through your fabric easily without leaving big holes. If you are sewing along and you have skip stitches or your needle breaks, you're probably using too small of a size of needle. If your needle catches on the fabric or your stitches aren't perfectly straight, your needle is probably too big. So if you're stitching just two pieces of cotton together, you're just piecing your quilt. You might want to try a quilting or Microtex needle. Start with the smallest size possible. You can start with a 10 or 11 or a 12. If you're quilting through layers, you'll probably want to use a quilting needle or a top stitch needle. Again, if what you're using is working, 
that's fine. But if you're having a problem, it's time to fine tune perhaps your needle. Now your needle also has to match with your thread. So if I'm using a 40 weight signature thread for top stitching or quilting, I'm going to want to use at least a 12, maybe even a size 14 needle. If I'm using a size 50 thread for piecing, so, um, or even a 60 thread, I can use a smaller needle. For top stitching and quilting, here's what I do. If I'm stitching my layered, so I'm talking about a quilt sandwich, if I'm quilting on my domestic machine and I'm straight stitching using my walking foot, I'll use a quilting needle, probably a size 12, unless I've put in a size 40 thread. I might use a 14, but usually I would use a 12. If I'm doing free motion quilting on my domestic machine, I'll put in a top stitch needle, and that's just because the, the free motion creates more tension on our needle and our thread and that extra large eye in the top stitch needle just gives me more success. When should you change your needle? Well, industry standards say every eight hours of stitching you should change your needle. Some people say every time you start a new project, but if I've just done a little table topper, I really don't feel the need to change my needle. If your um, thread is skipping stitches, if it's breaking or shredding, if your fabric is puckering or pinching, and especially if you hear popping of your fabric, it is definitely time to change your needle. What do you do with old needles? Well, they don't go into the garbage. They are considered a sharp. So you need to take your needles, put them in a pill bottle, into a gum container, um, and keep it till it's full. Tape it shut, label it sharps, and take it to your eco station. Now, I want to show you one more thing that will help with needles. This is a needle inserter to help you put your needle in your machine. Let me show you how it works. Let me show you how the needle inserter works on our needle tool. Your needle has a flat back and this, this end of the needle tool also has a flat back. So your needle simply slides in, it'll only fit one way. Then I take my needle and simply insert it into my machine. Tighten my screw just enough to hold the needle and remove the inserter. Now I'll take my screwdriver and tighten that nice and tight and just like that, my needle is in. Well, that was a lot of information on needles. And you're thinking, how am I going to remember all that? You don't have to. Schmetz has, you got it, an app. You can download the free Schmetz app and find all of this information and keep it ready and handy on your phone when you come to the store. We also have a great little take along book called Know Your Needles at the store. And if you pick one of those up, it gives you lots of information. I hope you've enjoyed my How Tuesdays on how to choose a needle for your project. Have a great day.